myself vivek sharma i am from xyz company that is how you know general interview start in india mostly i don't know about abroad but you know people like by heart they're by like myself itself so yeah but my typical answer to that question is um my name is robin and uh, i have been a sales executive and uh, a lecturer at an engineering college and business system analyst manual tester automation engineer test liaison i have done a lot of things for money okay so with that out um see uh, i've given a lot of interviews in the past 2 3 years and i've taken a lot of interviews in the past 2 3 years and i've done some research also like late night googling and stuff and that is when i started to see patterns or anti patterns for that matter okay um see the core reason for this talk is that uh, i am agitated and angry and irritated by the traffic jams in bangalore yeah. i'm actually angry about that but the actual core reason for this talk is uh, this entire test automation interview circus going around town right so you guys in india you would have felt the same thing you know people ask you file io in test automation right or method overloading versus overriding like 100 times like whenever i go method overloading overriding okay sir spellings are different right but the you know the interviews nowadays they have become like stage plays stage plays like you know the interviewer mugs up the fibonacci series code candidate mugs up the fibonacci series code they say their dialogues and then the selection is mostly done on you know uh, some other uh, parameters like you know cute hairstyle nice clothes nice fragrance stuff like that so you know technical interviews like this make me feel like uh, having a cigarette most of the time i'm feeling feeling like having one right now so would you guys you know like all of you thought that i'll light it up right the fact of the matter is that i'm not a smoker okay yeah if anybody wants this it's kept here and the light okay but um everybody judged me that is the main thing see it's it's human nature we tend to judge people we tend to judge them as soon as possible right interviews do that all the time which actually agitates me right so i'll give you an example so this guy he um bumped classes or like he ran away from classes he learned calligraphy he went to india like and he was he had mostly no technical skills and would you hire this guy the main question is that because this is the same guy as steve jobs so you know that is my main point you should not be judgmental you should not do snappy judgments okay that is the main thing you should not judge a book by its cover or a person by the cigarette in, it, in his hand okay so that is one thing uh, moving on this is another thing one of my friend used to do is he used to play for the gotchas gotchas are like you know questions like fizz buzz fizz buzz coding interview question very famous very common very easy uh, so so just to introduce you to fizz buzz uh, we have numbers in a sorted integer of array and uh, you should iterate through the array for loop and if the number you find is divisible by 3 you print fizz if it's divisible by 5 you print buzz and if it's divisible by both 3 and 5 you print fizz buzz right pretty easy so it has a very nice gotcha element to it you know if you don't write the if then if else if in the right order you get it all wrong so what my friend used to do is like you just wait like an eagle like an eagle flying he used to wait oh this guy wrote like if else if wrong right oh gotcha see can't clear your interview can't do if else if right like how how does it connect to actual test automation i have no clues but the main fact is that people play for gotchas so that is my second main point um uh, interviewers should not play for the gotchas right interview should not be uh, your ego satisfaction exercise you know like i am the smartest person in the room you know by the way yeah, i invented data structures do you know data structures things like that <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people tend to do that i hate them like i want to give them a high five in the face with a chair on the spot <laughs> dude <laughs> right so that is one thing um the next thing is like okay this, this small story i was passing by silk board few days back i passed by silk board every day but few days back i was passing again so the single was stopped okay and uh, i was browsing mobile facebook stuff wasting mobile data and Uh, the taxi driver next to my scooter he says uh, something like habu pump something i don't know and uh, 
I'm like, yeah, he's asking some time or directions. I'm like, yeah, Kannada illa, sir, which actually means uh, I sort of don't know Kannada. Then there's this cute lady sitting in the taxi. Like, very cute, lovely. She's saying um, that the driver is saying that there is a snake under your scooter. <laughs> the next thing I do is like accelerate, almost bump the next car, right? Lesson learned that day, be a better listener as an interview. From that day on, I'm like a lot better listener. Whatever you say, even if I don't know the language, I listen to you first. If you make hand movements, I'll be better listener. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry. Yeah, after the snake, everybody would forget the cute lady. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's the thing. Be better listeners. Interview, interviewers should be better listeners, definitely. Right? You're not there to blow your own trumpet. You're not there to solve your own questions. You should ask questions. Listen for the answers. You can ask impossible questions, by the way. But you should help the guy, the guy in front of you. Okay? So that is one thing. And a few days back, I improvised another poem. It's like, roses are red. Violets are blue. Let me ask some Java in a Selenium interview. Okay. So that's okay. People ask Java. It's okay. Right? I ask Java whenever I take an interview. It's okay to a certain extent. Okay. Then, but you know what happens is that it gets sort of weird after a point. How it gets weird is like people start asking you serialization and deserialization. You know, traverse inverse of binary tree. I don't know. I have never used that in test automation. Right? <laughs> I don't know who who would traverse the inverse of a binary tree to get some web element, right? <laughs> I don't. So people ask that. I get frustrated. Same, you know, high five in the face situation. So yeah, my tip is that you know ask contextual questions, ask practical questions. You know, ask things like how can you do cross browser parallel stuff in Grid, something like that. Or you know, people love to ask like what is Selenium? Like when somebody asks me that like what is Selenium, I take my CV back. Sir, what is Selenium? Come on, right? So, yeah. So I asked a lady a few days back in interview that, so, you know, what version of Selenium do you use? I generally tend to ask versions. It lets me know how practical you are, how hands-on you are. And she says, 42.1.1. I'm like, 2. Dot something, maybe. No, 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 we use the latest. We have Maven for the latest. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. <laughs> That is, that is the main thing, guys. You know, ask practical questions, ask contextual questions, help me help you, help the other guy help you back. And so, you know, when you ask these questions, when you ask practical problems from your project, uh, you might get some really good out-of-the-box solutions. You know, you might not select the guy, you take his solution, implement it, say you did it. Okay. <laughs> some guys do that. So that is one thing. Okay. So yeah, enough said about the interviewer. Um, I think I'm done. Five minutes. No, I think I have a lot of lot lot of things. So we'll move on to the interviewee or the candidate. Okay, he's the second most important part of the question. There are only two parts: uh, the interviewer and the interviewee. So yeah, um, two three years back, uh, I came back from US and I attended this interview for ENY. And uh, the interviewer asked me, Robin, how good are you in SQL? I was like, Sir, I came from US. I'm pretty good in SQL. <laughs> He, he said, like, what score? Like, on a scale of 1 to 10. I said, 8 out of 10. I'm, like, I'm confident. So he said, uh, do you know triggers? I said, uh, no, I don't know triggers. Do you know how to, like, set up databases with schema and stuff? I said, no. I generally borrow queries from the dev guys. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy says, Robin, you suffer from Dunning-Kruger effect. I even didn't know what was that. Now I know. <laughs> So yeah, lesson learned. Lesson learned is that I was way overconfident. You know, interviewees should not be overconfident at all. Like I was overconfident beyond sanity. Right? You should definitely not do that. <laughs> and uh, the other lesson I learned that day was this, like a tip and tricks. So you should undervalue and overperform. For example, when somebody asks you, "How good are you in Java?" You know, I say like I'm 5.1 out of 10. And you know, he might ask a silly question, easy one. I kill it. I kill the question, I kill the interviewer. That is how I do it generally. Uh, or I used to do it, by the way. I'm not giving out my tips. Okay. So yeah, you guys can do the same thing, right? So undervalue and overperform in the interview. That is one thing. Okay. So few months back, uh, there's another interview I attended. And this guy asked me, like this is like nine months back or something. 
this guy asked me, uh, have you done testing for responsive web? I'm like, yeah, definitely, obviously. Yeah, I've done testing for responsive web. Uh, my web app takes all kinds of responses. Small loads, big loads. We even got like proxy mob. We handle all the HTTPS stuff. This guy smiled at me, like really cute guy. who was a startup in Bangalore, 10 member team. This guy, he's like the CTO, he smiles at me. I'm like, yeah, he's smiling, awesome. <laughs> Later on, I go home, do some Googling, what's responsive? Then I smile again. <laughs> responsive, okay. Responsive has a different meaning, right? So yeah, like then I understood that you should be good in your basics, right? Like, like one of these day, these days, or you know, few days back, um, we have juniors join our company. I'm from Happiest Minds, by the way, and uh, apart from the name. I asked this lady that, uh, do you know what are front-end applications? She's like, yeah, front-end is what you see in the front, like, on the screen. I'm like, back-end is what you see at the back. He's like, yeah, obviously. <laughs> I don't know, like, people are pretty confident on their web basics. So, yeah, that is another tip, you know, guys, be good in your basics, understand how the web works. You know, we are into test automation slash Selenium slash web automation slash mobile and other stuff. But the fact of the matter is that we should definitely understand how the web works. You know, it does not matter you are from CS or IT or MEC, EC, branch, school, wherever, India, outside, Bangalore, I don't care about it. Nobody cares about it. You are into web testing, sir. You should understand how the basics of the web work. You know, you should understand things like what's web spear, what's rest, what's soap. I was telling my friends like a few hours back that, um, I took an interview and I asked this person that, uh, have you done API testing? Yeah, I've done both, SOAP and REST. Awesome, very good. <laughs> and so I asked him that, uh, what is the full form of SOAP? He's like, yeah, it has APIs in it. I'm, what, like, do you know what is state transfer? Yeah, that's also got APIs in it. I'm like, no, 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 you've got it all wrong. So people, you know, tend to cover a small portion and then they overestimate themselves and they are like, I'm a big pro or a master in API testing or testing or for that matter anything else. You know? We should definitely not overestimate ourselves like I do or used to do. And okay, so that's that. Uh, moving on, what I believe is that interviews are like your first dates and like romantic dates. You, know? um, you are calm, you act cool, you act shy, uh, fake smile. Uh, sweaty palms, you even wait for the call back from the other guy, you know, he might call me tomorrow. <laughs> hey, I don't know, we might, we might have a long-term relationship. <laughs> I don't know. So, see, the point is, it's as long as you are actually good, right? It's just like love. It's as long as you're actually good, you love what you do, you understand your basics, I think you should be good in a long-term relationship. So yeah, that's one thing. And uh, I as an interviewer and a lot of other people as interviewers, what they do is they, they say that, you know, do you have any last questions? So guys, don't waste that, you know. A lot of my last question questions have, have helped me in the next interview, okay? Like the Dunning-Kruger effect interview. So um, yeah, so people ask that, do you have any questions for us? I ask that a lot. And uh, that is the point when you should ask, you know, your objective and subjective feedback for the interview. You know, you would obviously understand that by the course of the interview or by the end of it, you will understand how did it go. You know, did you answer the questions correctly? Good. Did you not? Not good. Stuff like that. But you know, if you ask him, I think it becomes a lot easier for you to ramp up for the next one. So I had this lady come in and I asked her like, uh, do you have any questions for me? She's like looking at my phone and do you have iPhone 5 charging cable? I have cable, <laughs> like that. that's a question wasted, right? Totally wasted. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's one thing. Um, and then there's one more very important piece. This is like the most important amongst all these. The only way to, you know, be good at coding is practice. Just one word, practice and maybe hard work and perseverance, like two more words. But the fact of the matter is that as long as you practice, hands on, you'll be good, right? Interview is candidates, folks like me, folks not like me. Please don't mug up the code, okay? It's a trap. 
It's like wearing your pants on your head. It's like, I'll by heart my maths book tonight. It's not like that. You know, you can learn the Pythagoras theorem, but you can't learn the implementation, right? So that is one advice. Uh, there are like, I think, n number of websites today. They were not there when I appeared for a lot of interviews, sadly. But now we have like Coding Bat is there, Hacker Rank, uh, Hacker Earth, Top Coder, n, n number of things, okay? See, what these will help you in is doing is a lot of practice and a lot of companies nowadays, um, at least in India or in Bangalore, they, they subscribe for the online test before you actually do an on-campus interview, right? So when I like uh, came to know all about this after a mishap, I had to attend a test online and I'm like first time in my life I'm seeing Hacker Earth and they have a small code piece which you should run and then the actual code piece. I'm like, dude, I'm not able to solve a simple programming problem. Because I've never seen Hacker Earth or Hacker Rank or those things before, right? So, yeah, that is the crux of the matter. You should practice, practice, practice. I can repeat it like seven more times for all my fingers, but you should definitely practice. When I say practice, my juniors tend to say, yeah, sir, we practice test automation daily in the project. <laughs> no, that is not the case, okay? You should practice in the project. You should practice out of the project. It will keep your brain running, okay? So as simple as that. So. Abraham Lincoln had once said that if you give me six hours to chop a tree, uh, I'll invest the first two hours in sharpening my ax. The same applies to your coding skills. If you don't sharpen your ax, you know, your ax will go blunt, you'll go for an interview, they might, you know, shout at you, leave dogs after you, I don't know. <laughs> so frustrated, right? <laughs> so things like that, you should practice daily, at least or like twice in a month, something like that, I don't know. It's like your gym schedule. You should definitely go to gym and you should practice a lot, okay? So yeah, that brings me to um, actually the last aspect of my talk is that the interviews, the interviews which you give are uh, like your portal to your career, you know? What a lot of folks don't understand is that if I'm getting 40% hike, I'm good. No, no, it's not like that. It's not about the hike. ESOP, free food, nice coffee. And as a matter of fact, I fell for the free coffee. <laughs> yeah, I used to work for a company with, you know, whose name started with A and uh, they don't have free coffee. So yeah, those things apart. The fact of the matter is that don't fall for these traps. You know, your interviews are your portal to your career. So d you decide right now, like we had this interview question, where do you see yourself five years from now, right? All of us have like brilliant English answers for that. It's not like that. You should regularly and definitely figure that out right away in the right way. Because, you know, see that uh, for the dev guys, it's sort of easy. You know, you dev, senior dev, architect, senior architect, so on and so forth. For testing, how it, you know, happens is that uh, tester, manual tester, automation engineer, senior engineer, test architect, people manager, it suddenly like becomes like a branch out of a tree, right? Like people tend to get confused after four or five years of their career, what to do next? Like should I do PMP, Prince2? I, I don't know, I should do ISTQB, something like that, right? So yeah, don't fall for the hike, ESOP, other things like that, you can fall for them if you are really greedy. Um, but the fact of the matter is that decide your career right now. And uh, yeah, and then the last story is that, uh, yeah, I had gone for an interview next, there was this building next to my current building. I told my manager I am going for lunch and I went for an interview. <laughs> yeah, I think all of us do that. <laughs> and uh, this lady, she handed me a laptop and a paper full of programming questions and she's like, you know, make programs, we'll judge you on the programs you write. I'm very smart. What I did is I went to the HR back and asked her for the bathroom. Go to the bathroom and I ran away. I disappeared from the campus. They, they had questions like, you know, uh, perform 2D array rotation using Java. Like pretty simple questions and uh, I had no clues about that. And I was pretty sure they will ask me about the big O notation also. If I do this, big O is next. Or you know, O log N is next for guaranteed. I don't know, I, I have never used those things in my test automation. We are a small company, we do small projects, simple ones. But people tend to have an affinity for that. I don't know why. And yeah, I don't think it's going to go away in the near future. So yeah, the important point is um, you guys need to practice a lot. Okay, so yeah, uh, a lot of you would be expecting slides. So I did slides, then I redid them after 
you know all the projector magic happened yesterday so i made projector friendly slides so that slide one very important we are here right now okay uh that's slide two so all the characters appearing in this work were fictitious mostly including me and uh, slide three so the original slides for this talk which are there on um, the description for cconf can be found at the first url inspiration for this was taken from ted and toastmasters and some other blogs i don't know why they are showing up and google and youtube as always and you can find me at my email id or my linkedin profile that's it thank you guys uh i'm supposed to still have some time if anybody has any questions apart from my bank account details <laughs> or iphone charging cable i don't know ask me right away okay tell me sir yes couple of times Yeah, yeah, yeah. People say that you're like five out of ten. Java. Yeah. Okay. So I think a lot of interviews are yeah, a lot of interviews are mostly communication based, right? So if you feel that sense in the air, dude, he's like he's gonna abandon me. You know, tell him, sir. The scale, first of all, is subjective. to a lot of terms and conditions like when i tell somebody on a scale of 1 to 10 or when you should or anybody can he should tell them 10 means he can code with his eyes closed that is 10 that is why i am 5 i can open my eyes and code <laughs> right and you know people tend to love um, folks who are smiling at least fake like me right now or who are confident who are good at communication as of now until we get that fixed so you know in the interview at least try to be friendly if you feel you know something bad's happening try damage control tell him more stuff you know i have done serialization and deserialization <laughs> always does the trick for me okay that's one thing does that answer your question by the way mostly yeah tell me yeah whether do you know sql or not and okay. i said uh, yeah i know up to a point where i can you know get data from the table just yeah. select queries with where statement that's it i just, mm. i told this clearly uh -huh. still the person kept asking about joins <laughs> <laughs> triggers <laughs> yeah. and so on and for every question i was just smiling and i'm saying that i don't know see the good so thing <laughs> you did was you were smiling <laughs> <laughs> the bad thing is you know people tend to stick with the interviewer like interview is like he's the captain in the room he asks the questions it should not be like that right like i am a silver medalist in taekwondo if i if, any, if at any point i feel it going bad i have self defense if people get stuck to joints you know explain to a certain point and in you know ways by facial expression hand expression you can say you know i think that's about it about joints in my practical experience i have done this you know we should try to drag the interviewer back to what you've done what do you know and what you can do for him you know you should sell yourself back to him people tend to love joins inner joins left join i don't know <laughs> stuff like that nowadays we have mongodb yeah. so <laughs> you can say i know mongodb i say that <laughs> or you know i like we we do cassandra in our project do you know cassandra <laughs> so yeah The, like i was telling my friends at the lunch that we have fashion words going around nowadays you know instantiation vm stuff like that it will be there you know the world will be bad we can't make it good but at least in that room we should try right okay thanks thank you tell me sir yeah oh that's a very tricky question sir uh attitude is a very subjective word first of all and what i try to ask is practical questions you know like the version number give him a programming question maybe impossible to solve. like i tend to ask if um 
search or you know can you do recursive file directory search using python stuff like that it's difficult i don't know that but the fact of the matter is that you should look at the candidate and see how he approaches it's not about a solution it's about the approach he takes and how many times he falls and gets back up you know the same thing goes with this buzz if you tell somebody that you know can you rearrange your if else if can you fix it a lot of people say i don't think i can but then a lot of people try to do it and then a lot of people tend to get it right that's about attitude that is what i try to judge very bad judge but i try to do that okay <coughs> and i just have a suggestion here tell me sir no i think no for example right now when you do a resume yeah i think than putting your email uh, putting your github account is much better definitely 200% yeah, that's the one thing i would say and second thing is that right i think for me <coughs> now for my own org i see testing is changing yeah where uh, we look at people who are cross functional and uh, being ignorant to say i need not know a technical part yeah. is just is just being ignorant definitely just sir. being ignorant i think uh, i think i don't think so testing is just going to be the testing as we do where i all i need to know is how to write test case uh, pre condition post condition steps if we all think that's all testing i i would say in a big bank which has uh, 20 million dollar uh, profit every year we can do it but those banks are gone sir even if those banks are there i would just like to add on that's yeah. a very good point um, those banks are there. for me testing is 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 getting more and more technical right true at uh, uh, again right i think uh, you, you, even you say for example i'm not like against a particular person here even to day sql or for example right i think the expectation is that right you, you need not go to a developer to get get, get an sql that's uh, that, uh, if 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 someone does that i say you end up repeating what a developer did yeah. no 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 good definitely we should no not good. have that bias yeah that's no, a good yeah, point yeah i think you have to you have to, i think on one side you look at testing as independent uh, other side you look at technical as uh, as uh, being collaborative other side you look at test technical as being more and more or towards an agile more and more towards a developer there are there are multiple phases i think things revolves i think i think uh, i am going back to 14 years ago where i had uh, no testing organization yeah yeah they didn't have no testing back then i think i used to say right i think if you look at the current org we have a a b a c a d a to z a every a business analyst data analyst quality analyst you have all the a's now all uh, everything is going away that's what i see True, true. In my company, they say for doing one job, you need three people: a yeah, analyst, a yeah, developer, and a QA. No, come on, cut them. Do one. Yeah, It's simple. I true, think, true. I think people think we can. We have to. We have to put three roles into one team and do together. I think there's no point of putting three people to do one job. Put yeah, yeah. one people to do one job. Yeah, yeah. They had QAs, then they had SDEs, then they had SDETs. I don't know what they want finally. But if you're in the software world, you should know how to code. end of story you can't be in a mine and say i can't touch coal right there are folks who stick to manual testing i'll do manual testing for the rest of my life you can and that's a brilliant job right but definitely you should learn how to automate small pieces like you could write a small snippet in ruby python scripting to help yourself tell Sound. me yes ma'am um i just want to ask like if you come to know what the interviewer exactly wants from you will that help us while we are giving the interviews and if yes how do you find it out because i have been giving interview from past 3 months okay and it is really difficult to understand what exactly the interviewer is looking <laughs> yeah that's like a pandora's box a lot of people come they are like i don't know what you want i've got my own stuff <laughs> see but the fact of the matter is that go to the jd it is general written by the hr guys badly written right and the second thing is when you introduce yourself you know at the last you can tag a question that uh, this is what i have done does this align to your targets and uh, like if yes awesome if no i am going <laughs> not like that if no if yes then we can do this if no i am a good learner stuff like that if you are a good learner and you can add on that you know i know this we can help you do this stuff like that right see the interviewers in today's world they are like but they are like a puzzle themselves you first need to solve themselves then they need to solve your question and then help you right you should help them solve themselves <laughs> thank you thank you
Any other questions? Going once, twice, and thrice. Yeah. Thank you for the talk. Thanks, guys. Thank you.